feeling so fresh, so juicy Only rock with the best, I'm choosy I got the sauce, I'm choosy In the ghetto at the same time, bougie Ooh, I wanna take a photo Cause my style look up Caught a good vibe, I can feel it in my soul Hello and welcome to this episode of Kicking It With Natanya. I'm Vanessa and I'll be interviewing Siobhan today. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks Vanessa. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So we sent out an invite to all of her fans all over the world to send in questions that they had about Siobhan. And I'm going to ask you a few of those questions. Okay. Are you, are you okay? I'm okay. I mean, I don't know. Are you ready for the questions? Um, I guess I am. Okay. Don't come at, don't come hard at me. Hey? <laughs> you look very beautiful, by the way. Thank you. Where did you get your earrings? Oh, I got my earrings from Kenyatta Market. Okay. It's a almost like a thrift store, not thrift really, but traditional market store okay. in Kenya. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. And your bangles as well. Um, no, my bangles, my late grandmother made them for me. That's amazing. Yeah. You must have really very sentimental. Wow, that's be they are very beautiful. Thank you. So so amazing. Thank you. And how's how's everything for you? How's how's school going? How's the show going? Well, school is cool. We all know about school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, school is going well. Um, it's the last semester of my third year, mm -hmm. so done with undergrad soon and I'm pretty much excited. Okay, yeah. what are you studying? I study journalism mm -hmm. and media studies mm -hmm. and sociology, you know, I want to be within the people. Within the people. Match yeah. the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. And how's that going for you? It's it's pretty good. I yeah. feel like it was it was quite a focal point in terms of just being able to with journalism you, you work with a lot of people right yeah of course so sociology is about people as well mm -hmm. so i thought it really just made sense to me to mm -hmm. you know major in both these two subjects and just kind of just run with it it's going yeah. well i'm very oh, excited that's good it's funny because i wasn't doing soci in my first year and then i picked it up in my second year and i absolutely like ran with it i fell yeah. in love with it that's good mm -hmm. i mean sociology is definitely something to fall in love with yeah it ch i feel like sociology really just changes a lot of things and how you look at things absolutely yeah absolutely and how are you i mean you've got a show running you've got your entire brand that you're trying to build and at the same time you're a student how are you coping with all of that how do you deal with that to be honest it's not easy hey yeah. Um, it's very time consuming, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's doable. It's doable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not something that you cannot get around. If you yeah. want to do it as, as much as I wanted to do it, you know, I'm a TV student. It only made sense to me that, look, you're studying journalism. You better put some work into practice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really big on lifestyle things. Anyone who knows me personally knows that I love fashion, beauty, you know just music yeah. entertainment you know just everything lifestyle so i was like we have quite like some grounds here do you know what i mean mm -hmm. a lot of things happen in Grahamstown, and we could cover that i initially started doing this with my friend mananya senona mm -hmm. and i know you guys have watched our previous show style up your life mm -hmm. that was um, my starting point and that really did set me off for like a good start before this I mean, obviously, people are curious out there that why are you not doing the show anymore with Maya? Why are you doing your own show now? Well, um, everything... How can I put this? My show with Mananya, there was a lot of dynamics in there and we all had a lot of different angles. Mm -hmm. And it, it gets a bit difficult to just merge ideas. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And both our ideas were really, really great. But every we felt like we both have reached a point where we can you know just push our own brands yeah. do our own thing focus on what we really really want to focus on without overshadowing each other do you mm -hmm. know what i mean we support each other's work and i'm pretty excited to see what maya is about to drop mm -hmm. guys watch out for that girl she's about to come through mm -hmm. <laughs> and i mean i'm sure you guys are also friends i'm assuming okay and how was that um friends working together and then not having to work each other with each other anymore how what <laughs> advice do you have for your fans and your viewers in terms of 
knowing the seasons of your life knowing that there's a time that you work with someone mm. and then there's a time that you have to go out and work on your own because i'm sure change is mm. scary for everybody and so you you went through it you're conquering it you're doing your own thing now maya's doing her own thing now as mm. well mm. so what advice would you have for someone who's afraid to step out to do something for themselves i mean change change is never easy yeah of course but it's um, you need a lot of courage for that. You need to have a lot of self-confidence, belief in yourself. Working together, working with someone, having a partner, it's, it, it's not as hard as doing it alone. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Of course. Every time I felt like I'm about to buckle, I know Maya was going to jump in and save me. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing that alone, there's none of that, you know? So working with a partner, is good but never feel afraid to like just branch out and put yourself out there you know believe in yourself basically yeah that's that's literally about it mm -hmm. you know because you're already doing this thing and you can't always be dependent on people yeah because it is a dependency when you're working with someone it's, it's a codependency you know exactly definitely so believe in yourself just know that you got this and mm -hmm. run with it however mm -hmm. it will be received you're gonna work with it you're gonna try and make it better if you really have the you know, God's for it in the just the work and the willpower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you know that having a support system is very important. Wow. How has that been for you? Like in terms of having a solid support system in terms of family, yeah, or friends or best friends or whatever. And I know that you're from Kenya and yeah. you have I'm sure a lot of friends back home. How has it been for you in terms of having a solid um, support system to help because I mean you're doing a lot of things, so to help you through and to help you ground it. It's, I actually feel like I've had so much support from my friends. Um, there's people who've constantly been pushing me and telling me, you know, Siobhan, why are you not doing anything? Throughout this year, so many people have actually pushed me to be able to do what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Um, my best friend, Satsi Rujeje, she's been one of my really focal and like intricate real 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 ones mm -hmm. without that kind of support that you'd think she's almost even family yeah, you know of kind of thing of course it's family mm -hmm. oh my god <laughs> mommy don't kill me this family <laughs> yeah yeah um family has been great family is tricky as well because there's some content that you know i work with and there's some things you know i'm putting out there that you know, I'm like, oh, what will dad say about this? But even with that kind of just, you know. Are you basically trying to say that, um, do you feel that sometimes you have to censor yourself or censor what you put out there to the public? Because obviously you are someone's child, yeah. someone's niece, yeah. you know, someone's granddaughter even. <laughs> so do you feel that as a, as a journalist or as someone who puts content out there, a trendsetter, yeah. do you feel that you have to censor yourself because you don't want to look a certain way? Um, not necessarily censor, but I feel like I have to be really careful mm -hmm. with the kind of work I put out there. Um, I come from a very conservative background, yeah. you know, back home. People aren't way too wild with, you know, the way things are here. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm trying to get on a trend or try to do something, I think twice about it, sometimes thrice, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, okay, I'm doing this. And then most times I do, you mm -hmm. know, and most times to my surprise, it's received well because um, this is what I really want to do, mm -hmm. you know, even, even when I, I shoot something and then I call home and I'm like, mommy, have you watched? She's like, yeah, I've watched, um, not too sure about daddy. But then you'll actually find out that he's a fan of my work too, mm -hmm. you know? As much as he's conservative and he wants, you know, proper work. <laughs> okay, yeah, of course, of course. He's happy to see me out there. He's happy to see me doing what I love. Mm -hmm. And that's a kind of support system that's keeping me going, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, that's beautiful. That's yeah. amazing. And I'm sure it must be life-changing for you to be able to do this on your own and get your family support and your friends support as well absolutely so you spoke about loving fashion you look very lovely i love how you put this outfit together the jewelry the hair it's perfect thank you your makeup looks amazing and so in terms of fashion have you always been plus size were you ever small at some point in your life hell no <laughs> Hell no, um, okay. I've always been plus size, always okay. been a chubby baby. Um, I've grown, well in my family right, our genes were very big bodied, mm -hmm. you know, women especially. 
um, and I've grown up around you know very voluptuous women so it's something that my mom is a very very whoo, my mom's got style that's amazing <laughs> shout out to so, mom <laughs> yeah so I think I got it from her do you know mm -hmm. what I mean um I built my confidence from that from yeah. seeing a plus size woman just you know owning it and just slaying the game mm -hmm. so I've never really thought like you know I'm not the shit because mm -hmm. <laughs> I've basically just grown up and been natured by someone who has allowed me to accept myself my body size yeah for what it is mm -hmm. you know and set such a good example if I, if I do say so myself mm -hmm. so I've never I've never been tiny no okay. I've I have of course you know when you're like a teenager and you do like go through a period where you have insecurities about of course, of your course. body. I've, I've been through that. I've felt some type of way about my body before, but just in growing up and just you know becoming the woman I'm becoming, I just learned to love and appreciate my size, mm -hmm. to dress it up, you know, to just slay it. Why not? And so you spoke about how you had some insecurities at some point. What type of insecurities did you have? Um. Body size and security. Okay. We've grown up in a society that has stipulated and almost just given us, you know, um, a stereotype of conventional beauty, right. right? So you grow up and you see a lot of slender women, you know, maybe just a bit, nowadays thick is cute. Thick is cute. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But before, um, there was there was a set standard, you know, conventional beauty and how a woman should look. So in growing up, I felt insecure about that. You know, I always just you know, I never thought I wasn't beautiful, but I felt some type of way. I always thought, what if I was smaller? Would I look better? You know, and um, a lot of people have commented on my weight loss. Yeah, I have to say it's not anything actively. You know, um, I haven't done it actively. I haven't been trying to lose weight. Um, I've just changed a lot of my eating habits and that just came with a whole just growing up and taking care of myself you right. know eating healthier but nothing for the sole purpose of you know becoming smaller yeah yeah and how did you overcome these insecurities that you had because I'm sure a lot of girls are out there um, battling with these insecurities because they're not lucky enough or blessed enough to have a mother like yours um, who taught them from a young age that they're beautiful or that being plus size doesn't mean that you're ugly or less of a person but you're beautiful mm. so for you how did you overcome some of these insecurities that you battled with? I feel like it came from me you know as much as um, I'd have people around me tell me you're so beautiful and all that I had to believe that myself mm -hmm. you know I had to you know own it mm -hmm. and just be like this is who I am this is the kind of body I'm in mm -hmm. it's not going to stop me from doing anything you yeah. know I feel like I overcame my insecurities when I actually allowed myself to just be yeah you know in my body size in my being in my looks mm -hmm. you know I just fully accepted the woman that you know I am yeah and I'm like this is what you have work with it yeah Ladies need to learn how to appreciate themselves more and to stop seeking a lot of, you know, outs it's, it's okay, it's nice to hear, you know, once in a while people telling you, oh my God, you're so cute. Mm -hmm. But you need to tell yourself that, yeah. you know, you need to own that shit. You, <laughs> you need to actually just like appreciate yourself. Yeah. Appreciate yourself and in me doing that, then I blossom. Yeah. Mm. So it's about so, so it's about part, you. Yeah. It it's came from solely within. about you. Yeah. No one can no one can actually tell you this. And you, of course they'll tell you and you'll believe it, but then you have to believe in your voice. Exactly. You know and your beauty. And your beauty. Okay, that's beautiful. Mm. That's amazing. Mm. So you know that people have been speaking about colorism and the idea that light skinned women light-skinned black women have been more favored in society or are more beautiful and that's what we see in the media these days that um a lot of light-skinned women are being put out there as beautiful and we've got a lot of people bleaching their skin and and things like that but have you ever experienced colorism or at any point felt like you were less beautiful because of your skin color i'm not talking about your race but your actual skin color yeah I mean the yellow bone thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
when I was growing up, I'll go back to that again because you know, you'd, you'd get girls who were light skinned and you know, the boys would like those kind of girls, and I'd be like, oh my god, but I'm pretty too, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> thanks. Um, so, there was that, there's always been that, but I'd have to say, don't you think that this is popping right now? This it's color? popping. It's popping. Hey? It's really popping. I feel like we're taking it back. Yeah. We have a lot of people that we're looking up to. That we have a lot of black melanin goddesses, dripping gold and melanin. Legit. Literally, literally, literally. Yeah. All over the waves, everywhere. Mm -hmm. You name it. Lupita Nyong'o. There's everywhere. everywhere. So mm -hmm. that also just brought back a lot of, you know, confidence, mm -hmm. you know, in, in my kind of skin color, in yeah. my kind of, you know, tone and fancy beauty they're making makeup for us now exactly, Vanessa. exactly. i'm trying to get some of that i, I mean, don't know how but <laughs> you're going to make it happen you know what i mean yeah, a legit like your skin tone color i feel like we're making moves yeah hey we're making moves in the right way we're including everyone we're becoming inclusive so if you're still thinking and looking at women and categorizing them and just thinking okay maybe because she's a bit lighter borderline white then she's cuter Hey, you're living backwards, hey? That's Literally, what I have to say. Exactly, exactly. Because times have changed. Mm. And I feel like we're, like you're saying now, we're seeing more and more dark skinned black women, Absolutely. plus size black women Absolutely. out there and, and showing us that, you know, you can be black, mm. plus size, and be very, very mm. beautiful. Mm. It all can be done. We, we need to let women just own their own shit, yeah. for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. hey? We need to let women just be. Yeah. In whatever skin tone, in whatever like size, body size, hair. Oh my God! Should I even talk about hair? We can, let's. Is your hair? What type of hair do you have? Uh, Vanessa, don't put me in the spot. But it's, <laughs> it's not. I don't have nappy hair. I don't have really coarse hair. I have relaxed hair. Yeah. But I've had relaxed hair for the longest time. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't make me any less. Because there's that. Yeah. Hey? Any less African. Do you know what of I course, mean? Of course. Of course. Because there's that. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm, I had really tough hair. And you know how our parents relax our hair and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But I grew to love that hair. Mm -hmm. You know, I took care of my hair. If you've seen my natural hair, it's very long. It's very luscious, beautiful mm -hmm. hair. So I nurture it. I take care of it, you know. But then, pros pop too. They you do. Know? They certainly do. They like certainly a lot do. of things. So what I'm saying in all this, all, all this hair, nails, whatever, whatever. Let's not tell women, let's not police them, let's not show them what to be and how to be. Let yeah. them just be absolutely how they are. Exactly. That's that's it. That's it. My entire chat. Because I mean, I've heard a few people say if you wear a weave or a wig or you relax your hair, mm. you're not uh, you're not African enough. You need to have natural hair. You, your hair needs to be coarse and not combed sometimes. You know, and people say if you if your hair is a specific way, um, you're not African enough. So for you, being a beautiful Kenyan girl, <laughs> what makes you African? Siobhan, oh. what, what, when, I, when you say I am from Africa, why do you, do you celebrate that? Do you celebrate? Oh, of course, what do you mean? I'm brand ambassador number one of my I mean, culture. we see, we see the jewelry. <laughs> I'm not just wearing this because I'm on camera. This is me every day. Yeah. I Literally. absolutely am in love with my culture. Mm -hmm. The Maasai people, uh, oh guys, don't even get me there, hey, it's sentimental, it's passion, it's all of it. Mm -hmm. I love being African and I absolutely love being a Maasai young woman, mm -hmm. you know, that's what makes me African, my mm -hmm. roots, you know, my ancestors, Yeah. you know. I'm back there, Vanessa. You are back there. And if you you're not there, we have to be there. Yeah, we have to course. celebrate this. Of course. It's been taken away from us for the longest time, we need to claim it back, mm -hmm. owning it always about owning it okay. so for you you're a young modern girl who has been you you've seen things on tv you've been exposed to tv and to the western world mm. um but you still remain very cultural and very grounded in your own culture mm. how do you manage to 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 strike that balance because i feel like a lot of people don't don't get that you know they feel mm. that you're either one thing or the other so for you, how do you manage to strike that balance between being a modern girl and being a Maasai girl? That this is me, these are my roots, but also this is me being modern. This is how do you how do you merge the two? You know, to be honest, I don't even think I'd be this cultured 
if um the well, I moved here in 2013, right? Mm -hmm. Let me put it this way. And I was I was still very young, I was about 17. So I I was a youngin', you know. Mm -hmm. Still am. <laughs> but just in that missing home, you know, I'd always tell my mom, mommy, please, you know, tell grandma to send me this, you know, and just that made so much of my personality. That missing home factor made me even want to learn more about, you know, who I am as a person. You come here and there's a lot of conversation around race and around, you know, just things like that, who people are. So that made me also just want to find out who I am, bring it back to how I put myself together. So I almost just like developed a sense of fashion and style around this, but then mm -hmm. that didn't stop me from still being, you know, trendy mm -hmm. and with it. It's, it's just, it's, I made it a part of my personality, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't have to always wear loops. I can wear dangling Maasai earrings, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's part of who I am. Yeah. Um, I found a balance point in, in that nostalgic missing home yeah and then just brought it back you know but then it's, it's actually quite a sad story <laughs> it is it is but I mean you made it beautiful <laughs> it's actually quite a sad story yeah but yeah okay. yeah okay have I answered your question you have I feel like you have answered my question certainly certainly so for you I mean you spoke about how you love music what type of music do you like damn I love my hip-hop mm -hmm. I love rap. Um, oh, I'm a rap fanatic. Okay. Are you? Yeah, That's I got bars. I could spit. <laughs> Can you? Do you wanna just try that one? Nah, 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 like nah. Just a little. <laughs> I'm lying. Okay. But sometimes I rhyme when I speak, and yeah. I'm like, look yeah. at you. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, I like Afro music. Um, mm -hmm. like a lot of actually West African music. Mm -hmm. A lot of. South African music. I'm a big fan of Nasty C. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I think he's got really good bars. So hip hop. You see, I'm a I'm a hip hop girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think that's a tomboy part of it because yeah. I've grown up with boys. Um, I also enjoy a bit of soul. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes just on a quiet afternoon, yeah. I like to just listen to some soulful mm -hmm. like songs. That's my mom. Okay. <laughs> okay. And yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. And what does being a woman mean for you? Like when you say that I am a woman, what are you saying? I think being a woman to me is every day just almost fighting patriarchal norms, number one. Mm -hmm. You know, just breaking it down to how things have been set up for women in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a fact. Being, Being a, a woman, woman is a fight. That's um, I've never heard of anyone speaking about humanity like that. Saying being a woman is a fight. It is. It's certainly a fight. Don't you? Yeah. And and you know that um a lot of women over the past few years, well a long time, but really it's been um very deep. The past few years have been fighting against gender-based violence and rape and things like that. What's your take on that? Have you actively fought against gender-based violence and rape and just? I support all the movements. Mm -hmm. I am for breaking down the cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm for consent, consent, consent. Yeah. Without consent, it's violence. Mm -hmm. There's no two way about it. Yeah. It doesn't matter if this person is a sex worker mm -hmm. or a target, you know, mm -hmm. a, a rape. Um, what do you victim. victim? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay. Consent is my entire chat when it comes to violence and gender-based violence mm -hmm. especially yeah yeah and how about domestic violence what's your take on it i mean women are being abused by their husbands i mean I, I, we do acknowledge that men are being abused by their wives as too. well mm. but i'm particularly speaking about the movement on gender-based violence against women mm. what's what or domestic violence mm. against women i mean is that a thing where you come from in kenya is it is it a real problem have you um come across situations like that um it's a thing when i say i think it's a thing everywhere yeah do you know what i mean it's a thing back home it's a thing here it's a thing in the, in the states it's a thing and we cannot be living in a world in 2017 where domestic violence is still tolerated mm -hmm. where love 
can be substituted for heart and pain you're going through it but then in the name of love mm -hmm. that narrative needs to be broken mm -hmm. we need to start actively fighting that kind of mentality because it's a mentality you go through the most you hear these stories even you know when you're in the house mm -hmm. you know your mom will be saying stories well not necessarily but you know what I mean mm -hmm. and it's a thing of women are even advised to you love you love this person you know you have children with this person you can't break this family up but then that's violence mm -hmm. that's how people die yeah we need to break that kind of mentality we need to change it all up you know it needs to be a completely new script new narrative we, not now not anymore not anymore yeah. we're not there hey at least I think so. I don't yeah. know. Of course, definitely. Active change, Vanessa, is what I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just saying, I'm going to leave. If you actually find yourself in this kind of situation, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not. But we need to have support structures. We need to have systems put in place to help these people. Yeah. You know? I mean, they're already there, but we need to, like, engage actively root it out it's mm -hmm. a problem it's a real problem hey okay? yeah and so for you how how if you if you you say that being a woman for you is a is a fight okay. every day is a fight for you as a woman this kind of fight we're talking about okay do you want to elaborate a little more when you say what do you mean it's, it's exactly this kind of fight that i'm talking about it's it's making um how can I put this? It's making a place for, you know, successful. <laughs> you know what's funny actually? Um, I saw a tweet the other day and it said, what's, what's a successful woman without a man? Mm -hmm. Absolutely that. A successful woman. Literally. Do you know what I mean? We, we, this is a man's world. The way systems are put in place, it's in, in favor of you know patriarchy. It's we're always in conversation about this. Men are always talking about men. Women are always talking about men. Men are trash. It's men, 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 men. We need to break that. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like it's a fight mm -hmm. to break that kind of narrative. To include women in this, you know, successful women, strong women, independent women. What is a woman without a successful woman without a man? Exactly that. A successful woman. Mm -hmm. So it's a fight. It's a fight in making a place for womanhood to just like be and be accepted and be incorporated. Because low, 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 low key. I don't even know because to me it's high key. Mm -hmm. Marginalized, eh? Yeah. We are the other. Man Have you ever felt marginalized by the patriarchal systems that we live in? Of course. In? We live in a world where. <laughs> oh. It goes down, back down to, you know, even just like the society we brought up in, okay? Where a man has a final word. Do you know what I mean? Um, I have an amazing father. My dad is one of the best fathers. But for the longest time, his word was the word. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, in, in regards to culture and respecting that, and the utmost respect for him as well. But he could be wrong. He is a human being. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But now, when I'm grown and I think about these things, this is when I realize, oh shit, no one could ever tell dad anything. Mm -hmm. You know, his word was the word. So this is what I'm saying. Every day, you know, we and and <laughs> and me and my father actually fought a lot because of just the woman I am. You yeah. know, um, so you've literally been fighting. <laughs> I've been yeah. fighting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my dad have actually fought a lot, and we get along now. We're very good friends now, and he understands me. He gets where I'm coming from, and I feel like if I could crack that, then it can happen. Yeah, it really can. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is a fight I'm talking about. This is a fact that every woman should actively engage in and just push for. Mm -hmm. 
because guys at the end of the day women and men make up this world hey it's not it's over it's done it's us it's us. not them it's, it's it's an us thing okay and so for you Siobhan I feel that you have found your voice and with everything that you are said you have clearly shown us that you have found your voice and you are using your voice so for your viewers out there who are yet to find their voices and are trying to figure out what it is that they should do in this world or how to even stand up and talk how to fight even as a woman every day how do you stand up and fight what advice would you give them that how do you wake up every day and find that fight in you how did you find that fight in you? i feel like your immediate surroundings influence that a lot mm -hmm. you know it starts with where you are yeah like we always say change begins with you mm -hmm. and begins from home mm -hmm. right i i legit just told you how my fight began from home literally do you know what i mean yeah. so start with where you're at make the changes that not make them but you know push for them you know also it's a thing of an understanding thing you know make people don't impose because that's what men did this is how it's supposed to be no 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 show actively show that this is why i want this kind of change mm -hmm. you know it's 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 just meeting people halfway mm -hmm. when actually that's how you you make change mm -hmm. then someone is like oh my god actually I get where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. Imposing is, is, is low key. I'm not a fan of that. Hey, it's I don't oppressive. like when people. It's very oppressive. It's yeah. like you're. Don't, there's ways to do these things. Start where you're at. Mm -hmm. um, let people understand where you're coming from with that. And then you move forward and you mm -hmm. make things happen. You know, you, you see things through. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's all in a peaceful, in a very calm manner. Eh, me, clearly I don't like aggressive things, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's just be happy and peaceful and just do it in... Hmm. So a fight doesn't always have to be aggressive? I don't think so. Even disagreements. It, things can be done with love. Yeah. So and you feel love is the basis of everything. Yeah. Like, do you feel secure <laughs> that the world needs to? That's how I'm a hopeless romantic, but okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Vanessa. Uh, people love difference, hey. Yeah. But I think it's something to 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 root up something. To to, yeah. to root up things. Something to root up something. To root to up bring things. Us a place of mm. compromise. Mm. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay, so obviously everyone has been wondering why kicking it with Natanya? Why should me as Vanessa tune into your show and watch it? Okay, um, kicking it with Natanya came about with. Okay, let me talk about the name first, mm -hmm. right? Um, kicking it, literally kicking it. I'm a big fanatic yeah. <laughs> of kicks. Yeah. Um, shoes. Yeah. So I was like, okay, there's that aspect of me. And kicking it as we know it is like, you know, chilling. So put it together. Natanya is my preferred, you know, name. I love that name to bits. So put it together, came, came around with kicking it with Natanya. And what it is about is just basically just exploring roots and not flowers. Mm -hmm. You know how nowadays everyone's focusing on the big shots and the people doing big things but we really especially in gram style let's speak about where i am right now there's a lot of people who are doing things that go unnoticed they don't have the kind of platform to just you know put out their their, their work their their effort they're just the business whatever it is they're doing you know really they don't have that kind of platform to just even be motivated. Don't you think people who are starting off need motivation to of get to course, where they're trying to get? Definitely. You know? So I, I sat down and I was there like, let's put people on. You know, let's be a plug. Let's plug people. Mm -hmm. You know? And that's not saying that if I do get a chance to work with big people or like um, people who are already accomplished, that I won't. No, definitely I'll jump on them because mm -hmm. I'm also trying to get plugged. Mm -hmm. You know? I'm also just a root. Mm -hmm. Hey. So let's let's grow together. Let's all blossom together. That's yeah. where kicking it with Natanya came about. Um, putting people on and just you know 
exploring new, new talents, new arts, new creatives. I think of myself as a creative more than a journalist. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's where that passion came from. Of course. You yeah. know, just seeing other people and seeing the potential and being like, you deserve some light, mm -hmm. you know. I don't have that much because I'm also starting off, but I do have something. I have, have skills I've acquired. Have do you know what I mean? Um, the skills I've acquired from my journalism degree that I'm pursuing right now, my sociology, talking to people, just being around people, and I think that's a virtue. I actually think it's more in my personality than anything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I took it and I ran with it. Okay. Yeah. Roots well, not flowers. You. Roots not flowers. <laughs> Remember, everybody, roots not flowers. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, I look forward to seeing all the other talents that you're going to find. Mm -hmm. um, I assume not just in Grahamstown, but all over. All over. Um, are you doing anything in Kenya when you go back? Wow, everyone's been asking me this. Um, <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm looking um, at opportunities. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm searching. I'm actively looking for. Um, something I can work with back home. I have people back home who are also just, you know, doing a lot of groundwork for me and seeing how I can just merge the two, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm doing here and what I want to do back home, which mm -hmm. will pretty much be the sim most similar, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely going to work on something when I come back home. Definitely trying to be in the scene, you know, because that's home, yeah, you know. Of that's where I actually really appreciate a lot of support for mm -hmm. more than anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. you spoke about earlier how you're a Maasai girl. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I, I've always been curious about oh the God. Maasai people. What are you going to ask? I, I I actually want to come and visit the Maasai people. Oh really? And so do you think that maybe just maybe um for the people who aren't able to come all the way to Kenya, mm -hmm. you could do a piece on them as well. I mean, it's you. It's I mean, it's the roots, wow. not flowers. So take us back to your Maasai roots and show us. Um, what you that just, means? You actually put me on. Yeah, That's what you just did. Literally, <laughs> I, we want to I will, see. I'll definitely what it means to be a Maasai girl. Absolutely, Maasai people are beautiful. Wow. Consider it granted. Thank you. Consider on it behalf granted. of all your viewers. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And on behalf of all of Africa and the world, people <laughs> who can't make it to Kenya. Thank you very much. I will. I mean, I'll, show us stories that haven't been told yet. I will. I'll do it. Especially for you and just for those who are interested as well. Because, yeah. wow, Vanessa, wow. It is It is important to me, you know, like I said before, my mm -hmm. culture. And I, I, will, I will show you where I come from. I will put on um, a good show of the Maasai people for my audience. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your honesty, Siobhan. I really appreciate it. I'm sure your viewers out there appreciate it very much. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Um, we look forward to seeing everything you're going to be putting out there for us. And thank you for just putting your life out there and being completely transparent and honest with your life experience. Thank you for tuning in. To kicking with Natanya. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If she asks for money, never leave with the bra. And if he say he'll pay you next week, he's a fraud. East African girl, hella mean with the quad. One time, then I leave with the squad. Uh, she say she got the sauce, I got the mayo. The way I rock the city, Nairobi be like, hey yo. We can chill in my car. Can you with my bullshit? Eh, wanna babaika?